morning and welcome to worship at Port Williams United Baptist Church. I don't know whether you've been out this morning shoveling your driveway like so many of us here in Nova Scotia or basking in warm weather wherever you are, but we are glad that you are with us during this time. We invite you after our service to join us for Sermon Talkback, an interesting one this week as we have a special guest that you will hear a little bit more about during the worship service itself. We do seek to be church to each other, even during these times in which we are virtual. So if there are ways that we can be of assistance to you, please let us know. We do want to be church for and with you. During this time, we pray that you will be able to enter into the presence of God, to hear God speak to you, to recenter your life. So now we invite you to prepare your hearts and minds as we worship our God together. in the call to worship. We believe that God is our rock and our fortress, a deliverer who delights in coming to the aid of those who seek the Lord. We believe that God is always moving the world towards justice and righteousness and that we are invited to be agents of that movement. We believe that God is faithful and patient. God does not give up on us or on anything he created. We believe that God is near, always present, in our troubles, sadness, loneliness, and fear. We place our hope in God because God alone is completely holy, trustworthy, and true. Thanks be to God, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. I'm here to promote the coldest night of the year walk on Saturday, February 26th. Coldest Night of the Year is a moment each year when tens of thousands of Canadians step outside the warmth and comfort of their homes to shine a light of welcome and compassion in their communities. Since it all began in 2011, the Coldest Night of the Year has raised over $43 million in 149 communities across Canada. I'm all set to go walking in my community. I've got my scarf, my jacket, my mitts, my warm boots, and my coldest night of the year toque. There is a choice between a two kilometer and a five kilometer route walk. We walk through the cold on February 26 to declare our concern for people who have no home and to take shelter in nooks and crannies. We walk for those whose days are a battle to feed and house their families and whose nights are filled with fear and frustration. We walk for those driven from home by violence and abuse. 
and we walk for people overwhelmed by isolation, guilt, and despair. We walk humbly, realizing that anyone can lose their footing and then lose everything else. We are the Port Williams Trekkers, registered under Annapolis Valley with our fundraising dollars going to open arms in Kentville. We are looking for walkers and for donations. Please check out the information about our group on the church website pwubc.org or in our church weekly newsletter. Our goal is $2,000, but we'd be very excited to raise that at any time. The toque is given to each adult who fundraises $150 or more and for each youth 17 and under who raises $75 or more. I have pledge sheets in the church office if you need one. Also, any walker aged 17 and under is required to have a parent or guardian sign a printed paper waiver, which I have as well. I'm in the office on Tuesday and Thursday mornings and hopefully soon on Sundays when we'll be doing church in the sanctuary again. Please join us by either walking or donating to a walker. Thanks so much. Our reading is from Jeremiah chapter 1 verses 4 to 10. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Be not afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms, to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. This is our time for our children to join me for a few moments together, so I invite you to gather around so we can be together, at least virtually. Have you ever noticed how many people we have who take part and help out with worship? Just this morning, we've got Bob and, and, and Barbara Rushton. We've got Christiane, who's playing music. We had, we had Cynthia, who told us about Coldest Night of the Year. We've got you. In just a few moments, we're going to have a special guest. A lot of people help make worship possible. You know, the reality is, I guess I could do everything by myself. I could read all the scriptures. I could do the prayers. I could, you know, I could do it all. But it wouldn't be as good. It wouldn't be as good because, you see, it takes all of us working together to make worship happen here. It also takes all of us working together in order to make ministry happen beyond the walls of our church. In just a moment, Reverend Dr. Marlene Knowles is going to be with us to tell us about one of the groups that we partner with, that we work with in order to be church to a larger group, to all of Nova Scotia, to the Maritimes, to Canada, to the world. It's the Canadian Association for Baptist Freedoms. It's a group I hope that you will learn about, that you will listen to her, and you'll know something about, because it is a group in which reminds us who we are as Port Williams United Baptist Church. It's that Baptist part, because Baptist really does mean freedom. And this is a group that reminds us and helps us live that out. It's a part of who we are, of who we seek to be. It also is a group that works with us and helps us do church. Just like many times you help us do church. That I hope you will do again real soon. Let's pray. God, we thank you for others who inspire us, work with us, challenge us. Help us be your church. Help us partner with others to bring about the world you want to see. In your name we pray. 
Amen. Take care. I will see you soon. As we were going through our budget process last year, we had several questions about all the Baptist groups, all the organizations in which we partner with to do ministry. I realized was that some of us don't know what they stand for, who they are, and how we connect. We're going to try to take care of that in the coming weeks. Today, we are grateful to have Reverend Dr. Marlene Knowles with us. Marlene is not only a friend of this congregation, but she serves as the president of the Canadian Association of Baptist Freedoms, one of the groups in which we seek to partner with, in which we make ministry possible, not only in Nova Scotia, but literally across Canada now. Marlene has been invited to come and tell us a little bit about CABF, but even more to join us for Sermon Talkback following our worship service at 11 o'clock. I hope that you will join us to have some conversation with Marlene, to learn more about CABF, to find out how you can be involved as well. Marlene, we are grateful that you're with us this morning. Good morning, Port Williams Baptist, and thank you for this invitation to worship with you. It is indeed a privilege. At the request of your pastor, Don, and as the newest president of CABF, I've come to share with you what I know about the Canadian Association for Baptist Freedoms. Because you as a church and many of your congregation have been involved in this association for many years, I believe that you have a lot to offer as well. And I look forward to meeting you in the Zoom chat following worship time. So back to CABF. I gather that it all began in 1971 as the Atlantic Baptist Fellowship, when a group of ministers and lay people gathered to further explore historical Baptist principles, to join with other denominations in worship, as well as in pursuing so so social action endeavors and ecumenical discussions. Over the years, the ABF evolved into what is now the CABF, the Canadian Association for Baptist Freedoms a welcoming fellowship for all people, regardless of race, creed, color, language, sexual orientation, gender, age, size, and socioeconomic status. In other words, everyone. Everyone who wishes to seek after Christ and fellowship with him. We believe with Paul that in Christ, we are one. Today, the CABF is an association of individuals and church members that extends not only in Atlantic Canada, but in Ontario, Alberta, and hopefully soon, British Columbia. Individual memberships are growing continually as more and more become aware of the freedom to belong and to practice according to their theology. As one of the basic Baptist distinctives, the Lordship of Christ is our focus. This leads us to the scriptures and the guidance towards truth and life that it offers each of us. The CABF also believes strongly that each congregation faithfully con governs its own actions its leadership, its worship, and therefore is autonomous, yet always open and willing to share and to partner with other churches at any time. At the present time, CABF is concentrating on three basic elements. One is proclaiming, telling their story. And they do this through the bulletin, which is published three times a year, a well-updated website and Facebook page, and a new video that will be coming out soon. They do it through convening, which is gathering together for fellowship and education and discussions, such as the Rishton, uh, Vincent Russian lecture each June and, as the, and at the annual meeting in each October. Please note that our anniversary of 50 years will be celebrated in June, so keep watch for details. They do it through supporting, and this is done through walking students toward credentialing and ordination and accreditation as well as welcoming individuals and already ordained pastors into our midst. These are all facts that I've learned over the last few years as I've become involved in CABF. Prior to that, I was an active pastor with CBA, CBAC who gradually began questioning some things that I could not completely adhere to. Therefore, when the time was right, I discovered CABF and have not looked back. So what are the Baptist freedoms? Well, these originated with Jesus himself, and he proclaimed in Luke 4 when he said that he'd come to earth to proclaim freedom. 
At another time he said, if the Son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. Jesus has set us free, not to do just what we want, but what is right and good and pleasing to him. The statements of our vision and our mission say clearly and concisely who CABF is. Our vision states, Baptists freely seeking, living, sharing, and celebrating justice, peace, and love under the Lordship of Christ. Our mission? We encourage and support churches, pastors, and other individuals to understand and affirm Baptist freedoms as they express their faith. Thank you for allowing me to share with you some thoughts about CABF. And thank you as well for being an active member and participant with us as we go forward. May God continue to bless your ministry here at Port Williams Baptist Church. Stay safe. God bless. Amen. Today's scripture reading is Luke chapter 4, verses 21 through 30. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is this not Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly, I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, and when the heaven was shut up for three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land, yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Seraphath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them, and went on his way. Will you join me as we pray together? There are times, God, when your words come to us with such great comfort that we are almost moved to tears. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord himself goes before you and we will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. God, those, those are the verses we love. We turn to them time and time again to remember that you are love, and you care for us, and you want the very best for us. We love those verses because they fill us with good feelings. But there are others, oh God, other verses that confront us, that hold up a mirror to us, to those parts of us that we would prefer to ignore, to deny that they even exist. And when we hear those verses, well, in those times we sometimes act with our worst selves. We deny them, we pretend that you are talking about someone else, and at our very worst, oh God, we are like the people of Nazareth, we seek to remove those words, even you, from our midst. God, we pray that whenever, whenever we hear your words, we will remember who you are. You are pure love. 
and your words are given in and with love. Help us to hear your words, both of comfort and of correction, as you seek to bring us into your intention for us, for all of creation. Give us open hearts to hear, pliable lives to change, and over all, most of all, the knowledge that you do love us. For God, you love us so much that you sent us the very image of you, your son Jesus, in whose name we offer our prayer. Amen.